Hi guys, and welcome to this, my video on algebraic expressions, a new video in our year nine series. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Really good to have you along. If you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on TikTok, and all that exciting stuff there. Now, actually, what are we going to do? We're going to look at uh, all the important stuff for algebra. Year nine is massive in terms of algebra, and I always put the learning objectives here. So if you want to just pause the video, have a look over, and see what it is I'm actually going to cover. But you know what? Life's too short, yeah? Re a recap of past learning. Can I do a recap of past learning? Well, it's a new topic. And if you're really, really lucky, you've been doing algebra in year seven, year eight. In fact, I know you've done algebra in year seven and eight. By the time we get to year nine, it is pretty important, guys. If you haven't really understood what's going on, stop, have a review, because if you don't really understand the basics, there's gonna be problems as you go through a little bit later on. Not to say that you can't learn, and that's really why I'm doing these videos, okay? So basically, we're gonna recap some of the stuff we have done before. Now, some important language, like really important language, and algebra is all about the language. Once you know what you're talking about, <laughs> it is easy peasy a lemon, a squeezy, he says, all right? Now, obviously, you've got to be able to communicate mathematically, and your teachers are probably going to turn around and use things like pronumeral, variable, coefficient, term, constant expressions, and equations. And being able to learn them is awesome. Now, if you're like, oh, I can never remember this stuff, write it down in your summary book. If you're over here in Australia, the chances are you're allowed to have a summary book where you can write stuff in. The process of writing it in is basically going to help you learn. But here we go. What is this? This whole thing here is called an expression. Why? Well, it's very different from this thing here. And you're going to say, yeah, because it's got more stuff in it, and it? Not so much that, but this thing here. That equal sign makes it an equation. Because this doesn't have an equal sign in it, it is an expression. Now, what we can do with expressions is we can simplify them on the whole, all right? We can make them look easier. With equations, we can evaluate or solve them. Now, there's again, there's a difference between all of this. But anything without a letter that's stuck on its own is generally called a constant. Now, that minor, you'll notice I put a circle around that whole thing. The minus sign belongs to the four. Really, really important. Any numbers in front of letters, and again, I'll come back to that in a moment, are coefficients. So that coefficient would be three. The coefficient of this would actually be plus two, all right? So we'd normally just say that two, because in maths we don't normally say the plus stuff, do we? The coefficient here would be minus four, because the minus sign belongs to the four. Really, really important. Here's a question. What is the coefficient of C? What number is in front of the C? And you might say, zero, nothing. And I'll go, blah, 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 blah. no, there is something there. It's actually the number one, because that is one C, and we don't need to write the number one, but there is a coefficient. Now, letters are called pronumerals. So that A there is a pronumeral. That A there is a pronumeral. That B and that C, they are pronumerals. They're just letters. You might also call them variables, because in maths, we can change the numbers. We can change what that letter stands for when we substitute. Now, what you've got to notice is that that is 3A with a floaty 2. That A with a floaty 2 is very different from that A there, because this A here doesn't have a floaty 2, does it? All right, so again, being able to keep that in our mind is going to be important as we go through this topic. Now, again, this is a bit of a, a recap, and if you are in Australia and you do bod mass, stop it. Cut it out. I do not know what that O stands for, he says with his students now saying over, of, whatever. No, 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 don't do that, please. Bid mass. It is bid mass. Why? Because I for indices. And you're going to go, hold on a moment, what on earth is an indice? And I'm going to say, it is a floaty number. You're going to say, excuse me? Absolutely. A floaty number. What on earth is a floaty number? It's a number what floats. So if I have an A with a floaty two, there you go, it's a floaty two. Otherwise known as a squared, or a power, or an index, or an exponent. Why do we call this so much stuff? Barry hates us. In Australia, a guy hates us. Why? Because he was trying to trick us with the language. But generally speaking, this is the order. When we are given some sort of sum or an equation, that we try and solve it. We try and deal with the brackets first, then the floaty numbers, then the division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. That becomes really, really important as we work through this, okay? So try not to mess this up. 
uh, when you do this, it's just a set of rules. Your screen got stuck. Now, I always say language is a pain because this says evaluate. But why have I made the value bigger? Well, because it's evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. Find the value. And you're going to say, is this guy really insane? Not really. Have you subscribed to my YouTube yet? Please subscribe. It's the only way I know that people are actually watching. And you'll be able to do that. Mathsguru.com. What is this magic you speak of? Well, basically, everything I write on behind me at the moment, all these videos are on mathsguru.com. It's absolutely free to sign up. Wow. You could get ahead of the game if you wanted to. Yeah, if you wanted to. When you are asked to evaluate, you are trying to find a value of something. That's very different from simplify, because when we simplify, we generally can't, you know, find a final answer, right? We might make it look different. That might be my final answer, but it might not be numerical. So we also get to this point of substitution. I hate sport with a passion. If you are asked to substitute, guess what? Absolutely, you can put one value in place of a letter and then generally speaking, work out the maths behind it. Now, I can't really do a lot of learning in this particular video. There are so many examples that we could cover, but I'm gonna try and show you how language and maths goes together. If you're pretty good at reading, you're probably gonna be pretty good at maths. They've generally shown that. So for example, if I want to write an algebraic expression, what on earth is an algebraic expression? One, it's got algebra in it, so numbers and letters. Twos, it's got no equal sign in. So let's have a look at here. The number of tickets needed for three boys and our girls. Now, when I tend to do this, I say, well, I obviously need three tickets for the boys, but I don't know how many girls are out, do I? Well, if I had one girl, how many tickets would I want? Well, I'd want three plus one. If I had two girls, how many tickets would I want? I'd want three plus two. If I had three girls, how many tickets would I want? Three. Ah, so all I seem to be doing is taking the number of tickets for the boys and adding it to how many tickets I need for the girls. Ah, well, the question says I need R girls. So all I'm gonna do is put the letter in there. Now you're gonna turn around and say, but I can't do three plus R. And that's the whole point of this topic, all right? It's not about finding an answer, it's about writing an expression. And this here is an expression. What about the next one? The cost of P pies at three dollars each. Now again, I'm gonna I always think about the number one. Right? I've got pies. They're three dollars. If I buy one pie, how much is it gonna cost? Three bucks. If I buy two pies, how much is it gonna cost? Well I would do three times two, wouldn't I? If I had three pies, what would I do? I would do three times three. If I had four pies, what would I do? Three times four? Well I've got P pies. So realistically, all I'm gonna do is $3 times P. Or, to write that simpler, three P dollars, right? Because between a number and a letter is a kissy kissy. We'll come back to that in another day when maybe I won't get arrested. The number of grams of peanut for one child when 300 of grams of peanuts is shared among C children. Again, so many words. But what it's trying to say is, I have 300 grams of peanuts. Ooh. Sorry if you've got an allergy. Hopefully this video is anaphylaxis safe. 300 grams. Well, what if I had one child? How much would they get? 300 grams, obviously. Well, what if I had two children? Well, wouldn't I do 300 divided by two, which would be 150 grams per child? Yeah. Well, if I had three children, would it be 300 divided by three? And if I had four children, it'd be 300 divided by four. And, but I haven't got that. I know how many children have I got? I've got C children. And so what we've now worked out is I would be dividing. That's what we're actually doing. ka -ching. Now, realistically speaking, you should be able to take any question that looks like that and start building it up. Think about one. Think about using numbers first. And then when you've worked out the operation, put in those letters. Now, again, here is more language. And what I've tried to do is if you go onto mathsguru.com and download these PowerPoints, you can put this in your maths book. You can copy it in. You can cut it out if you're that way inclined. All right, but less than. When we see the words less than, it has something to do with subtraction. When we see the word sum, it means something to do with plus. When we see square, it means to multiply by itself. It's going to have a floaty two if it's squared. So let's break this down bit by bit. Write an algebraic expression for five less than x. Now, I'm going to actually... Uh, 
prove these uh, PowerPoints a little bit later on, there's supposed to be a carriage return there. So it's not five less than x, three more than twice x, those are two separate questions. So I want five less than x. Oh, well, hold on a moment. I've got x and they want five less than. Well, that means take away five. Oh, okay. So x minus five. ka -ching. Oh, next one. We'll do the next one now. I'll highlight it for you. So three more than twice x. Hmm. Three more than twice x. Twice x seems to sound like I'm taking x and doing it twice or two times x. All right. So there's two times x, but I want three more. Well, more means add on. So two plus or two x plus three. Oh. The sum of a and b is divided by four. Now the order there is really important. We've got to sum a and b first and then divide by four. Well, okay, I can do that. I can do a plus b divided by four, can't I? Now many of you are probably screaming and go, yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. And that's because I've tricked you. In this instance, that divide sign only belongs to that b. And actually, that's not what we want. That divide sign has to belong to all of a plus b. So there are two ways of doing this properly. Either I can put a set of brackets around because the bracket says do that first. And that's what the question was implying. Add the a and b first and then divide by four. Or I could write this as a plus b all on four. Both of those are equally correct. Unfortunately, the bit without the brackets wouldn't. The square of the sum of x and y. Which bit am I going to do first? Am I going to square first or am I going to sum first? Well, again, this is the language, isn't it? And practice really does make perfect. The more questions you do, if you get them wrong, it's going to nudge your brain into being able to answer these better next time. So don't worry about getting them wrong. Think of it as something to learn by. Actually, so in this question area, we have to sum x and y first. So I have to do this bit first, x plus y. And then it says square them. All right, so I put a floaty two, yeah? Mm -mm. Because again, a mistake of the maths at the moment, that floaty two seems mathematically to only belong to the y. Well, we don't want it. We want to say add the x and y first. And what can I use to do that? A set of brackets, and then I can put the squared sign on. Whoa! And again, I, I, I probably make this easy because I've been doing it for years. But when I was your age, sheesh, did I stuff up a lot of this because I didn't know what I was talking about. I made so many mistakes. My problem was I never asked for help. Hopefully you are going to ask for help. Now, again, we're going to move on. Remember, this is the basics. Hopefully a recap of a lot of the stuff that you've done last year. When we substitute, we replace the pronumeral with a number. Oh, how exciting. What's a pronumeral? It's a letter. All right, so when we substitute, we replace a letter with a number. So we've been told here that whenever we see an A, let it be 5. Whenever we see B, let it be minus 2. And whenever we see C, let it be 3. All right, so here's what I tend to do. I always, always, always write out the equation first. And the reason being is because I put an equals underneath it, which is really good mathematical practice. And then I start to substitute bit by bit by bit. Right, so 7A. That is going to be 7, and where I see an A, I'm going to put a 5. Now, I'm going to stop there because, hold on a moment, I could get really confused now because I could now think that's 75, couldn't I? But that's not true because between a number and a letter, there is a kissy-kissy. Again, I'll do that in a different video. It's a times. And so we have to make sure that when we substitute in, we put the time sign in. Otherwise, our brain might misread this and go, oh, that's seven, uh, 75, so minus 2. Brackets, what was the value of A? It was five minus the bracket of, uh, minus the value of C, which is three. Now, I've put that in, my brain's starting to go, okay, what do I do? Well, I do bid mass, brackets. So we do the brackets first, all right? So five minus three is two. I copy down the rest of the maths. I don't try and do it all in my head. Minus 22, huh? That can't be minus 22. Nope, because between the number and the bracket is a times. So between this two and my bracket, my brackets become two, I put a little time sign in. Oh, so brackets, no. Indices, no. Division, no. Multiplication, yes. So I'm going to do my seven times five first, which is 35, minus my two times two, which gives me four. And so my answer to the first one would be 31. ka -ching! Right, let's do the next one. B squared minus AC. All right, so I'm going to write it down b squared 
minus AC. Put a set of equal sign. Right, what's my value of B? It's negative 2. So negative 2 squared minus A, 5. Between the A and the C, remember it's a kissy kissy, so it's a times, and C is 3. Okay. Now, a lot of people then try and put minus 2 into their calculators and try and get it to do it for you. And there's a bit of a trick here because your calculator's stupid. I'm sorry, calculator. This is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to use... Now, you guys may not have this calculator. Don't worry about it. It's the one that we use in years 10, 11, and 12 for uh, VCE. But I know a lot of schools in year 9 use this calculator. Same thing should work on your scientific calculator. If I do minus 2 and then square it, I'm going to hit enter. Your calculator is going to come out with minus 4. That is wrong. So, so wrong. Because if you remember, when you square a number, you multiply by itself. So that's actually minus 2 times minus 2. Well, hold on a moment. A minus and a minus is a plus. So 2 times 2 or minus 2 times minus 2 is actually 4. And again, going back to my calculator, it's stupid. So I always make sure that I put... Mm, um, negative numbers in brackets because then it knows. The calculator at the moment doesn't know who that minus sign belongs to. So it just leaves it alone. It's like, oh, I don't understand what's going on there, so I'll just ignore it. Really clever. Right, minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. All right, so now I'm going to do my negative numbers. 4 minus 15 is going to give me minus 11. And again, a lot of people turn around and say, oh, I'm not very good at negative numbers. That's okay. You weren't last year. This year your brain's moved on a bit. You can do this. Now, actually, that there is the very much of the end of this lesson. Thank you very much. How long was that? About 16 minutes. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Many more videos coming for the Year 9 series and other series, all right? Once you sign up, I'm never going to let you leave. I'm joking. I'm not a stalker. Hopefully, I'll see you in another video. If not, you guys, please take care and stay safe.